Okay, what we want to do today is look at how we use formulas and make trend lines and draw error bars using Microsoft Excel. What you're seeing here is some pendulum data and this first column here is simply the length of the pendulum which is varied between 10 and 100 centimeters. And then three trials were done for each length and the time, this, these are the times actually for 5 to fro motion. So it's five times the period. What we're going to want to calculate is, is the average amount of time for five two fro motions. The uncertainty in that time and then we'd like to calculate the period, the average period based on those values and the uncertainty in the average period. Then we want to do a graph period on the vertical axis as your dependent variable versus the length as your independent variable on the x-axis. So let's go back to the home screen. Uh, first thing we're going to do is use a formula and formulas as you'll see are really really easy to do and they save you an incredible amount of time so I want to calculate the average of these three values here and I can do that by making a formula so I click on the cell where I want to do the formula then I click up here in the formula bar put an equal sign to let it know that I'm doing a formula I can do this one of two ways I'm going to do it sort of the more basic way first and I'm just going to add up the three values and then divide by three. But I don't put in the actual values. What I do in a formula, tell Excel where the, where the number is located. And so my first number here is located in address B3. So I just click on that cell. I get B3 that comes up in the address box. Then I put in a plus sign. I click on C3. And then another plus sign. I click on D3 end the bracket and I'm going to divide all that by three and press enter and I get the average of those three numbers. Now what I can do with that value now that I have a formula is if I move my cursor around to the bottom right hand corner I get this plus sign, a solid plus sign. If I just drag down it'll drag that formula all the way down the column so I'm calculating all the average times there. To get my uncertainty in that average time what I need to do is take the maximum of those three values, subtract off the minimum of those three values, and then divide that by two. So let's click on that cell, put in an equal sign in the formula bar. I'm going to put a bracket around my numerator, so that first bracket is for to highlight my numerator. And then I want to calculate the maximum value. MAX is a formula for calculating the maximum of a list of values using Excel. So if I go max, and then put a bracket and then I select those three values then it tells me I'm going to calculate the maximum between B3 and D3. Then what I need to do is subtract off of course the minimum in that range of values. Then I want to end the numerator and divide by 2, press enter and there is my uncertainty in the time. Once again I can go to the bottom right hand corner, pull that value down and I get all my uncertainties in the time. Now my period here, I'm going to use a formula again, the period is just going to be one-fifth the average time. So what I can do here is put in an equal sign and just take the address E3 and divide it by 5, press enter, 0.64, and now I'll pull down the bottom right hand corner again and get all the values. Notice here that if I come up here and I'm in the home tab, if I come up here there's uh, two icons here. One allows you to increase the number of decimal places, one allows you to decrease the number of decimal places. So, so that can help you to keep your significant digits uh, correct. And finally we want to get the uncertainty in the average period. It's just going to be the uncertainty in time divided by fives. So what we can do again is put in an equal sign, take that uncertainty in, in the average time and just divide that by 5 to get the uncertainty in the period and press enter we get a value there and I'll pull that down so I've got all the values. Really convenient to use formulas and it will save you an incredible amount of work. So let's now try to create a graph out of that. If I come up here to the insert menu there's an option right here to make a scatter graph and there's several types of scatter graph. I just want a plain scatter graph uh, without any lines on it. So I want this one here. And then I'm going to come up here 
and there's a number of uh, formats already made up formats for for charting and I'm going to want a title and label uh, something like that should do me uh, once again it came up with the legend so I'm going to eliminate that I'm going to go to chart title I'm going to call the variation of the period of a pendulum I'm not going to write um, I'm not going to write a period verse length because that's really already indicated axes labels anyways so you don't need that um, for axis title here I'm going to change that this is my independent variable which is the length of the pendulum and the units are centimeters over here axis title I'll click on that and then backspace to eliminate that I'm going to call this 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 my dependent variable is going to be the period and the units are seconds don't forget to put your always put your units on your axis label the data that's that's here is just some some garbage that uh, uh, Excel has done automatically I want what I want to do is eliminate that data and so I'm gonna click on here and I'm going to select the data so I did a right click on one of the data points I come up with this menu and I click on select data and so they've already put some stuff in here I'm gonna remove that and start fresh again so now I'm gonna add my data now my series name is really just the the title which I've already put in so uh, this is variation now my X values that's my independent variable so I need to tell uh, Excel where my independent variable is located if I click on that chart icon there and then I highlight these numbers where my independent variable is and then I come back and click on that little icon it will input that data and then I need to do exactly the same thing for the Y data so I'm going to click on here the Y value is the period and that's these values right here click back and let's see what our graph now looks like so this is more like what we're expecting I kind of don't like those big data points and I'm gonna um, format the data series so once again I, I right clicked and came down here and gave me a menu format data series is what I want I'm gonna go down to marker options and I'm gonna choose something different I like the X's here and I don't like them so big so I'm gonna bring it down to about a three and close it off and that's more like what I'm wanting for my data points okay so now the next thing I need to do is to add a trend line and so a couple ways of doing that if I go up here to chart tools and choose layout then trend lines right here I've got a number of options I'm gonna to go to this more trend line options it allows me to um, see everything at once it does look somewhat linear I happen to know that the period should um, vary as a square root of the length and therefore um, I'm gonna try it with a power function and I'm gonna display the equation on the chart there are some other options that are, are sometimes useful um, for instance uh, this forecast feature uh, allows you to extrapolate beyond your data so that let's say I wanted to uh, my period here would be 20 so I want to extrapolate backwards about 10 units and press enter you'll see that it, it comes back very close so you can see that this fit is, is going through the origin if I do that this extrapolated data should be as a dotted line so I'm, what I'm going to do is is go back and uh, and get rid of that but you can see that the data it does curve down quickly towards the origin with that power fit so we have this function here uh, you can see that the the exponent is 0.499 very close to 0.5 in indicating a square root function the most common type of trend line that you will do though of course is a linear trend line let's now put error bars on this data so under chart tools again uh, there is an option right here for error bars and if we come right down here to more error bar options that gives us the the most options to work with I'm gonna want error bars in both directions and in this case here I'm gonna do the uh, uncertainty in the length the uncertainty in the length was 0 0.2 as it turned out so it's a fixed value 
so it's a fixed value and right now I'm on vertical error, error bars and there doesn't seem to be any option for switching to horizontal error bars but if you come up here to the top left corner here you hear you have more options and this one here says X error bars so I'm gonna click on that and you notice this changes to horizontal error bars so I want this fixed value of 0 0.2 and let's see how that looks if I close this off so the the lengths were uh, a very very precise measurement and uh, the error bars really aren't showing up so now let's look at the vertical error bars so I'll come back here to error bars error bar options I'm on vertical automatically I want to have it in both directions and I want it to read off these uncertainties right here so I need to tell it where the uncertainties are and I'm going to want to go down here to custom and I'm going to specify the value and once again I need to tell it that the error bars well there are right here and I want the negative value to be exactly the same as the positive value so they're located right here as well and so that's done and let's see how it looks now yeah you can see the the error bars are, are pretty good and it seems like the the trend line is going through pretty much all the error bars maybe with a a problem here that's how you use formulas make trend lines and draw error bars using Excel so that's all for today thank you very much